The CBC's Stephen D'Souza is in Houston. He is now along the funeral procession route and joins me now live. So, Steve, tell us a little bit more about where you are and maybe your thoughts on, on what we saw at the funeral for George Floyd. So, yeah, Andrew, we're about a 15-minute drive from uh, where the church and where the service is taking place. Just uh, beyond us is the burial ground. You can see this road here behind me. That's going to be closed off in a few minutes when the procession comes through. It's going to be closed off for about a mile because the final mile of George Floyd's funeral procession, his casket will be carried in a horse-drawn carriage. And so people here, as you can see behind me, have been lining this route for hours since this morning in the incredibly hot Texas sun because they want to be a part of history. And that was one of the threads throughout the funeral that we saw today, which really encapsulated all of the, compl uh, the complex interconnected emotions that people were feeling as a result of George Floyd's death. You know, the anger and frustration of seeing something happen over and over again, the historical injustice that this brings up, and for the mothers and fathers in that crowd, knowing that could easily have been one of their own children. And so there are so many emotions, and as well, the desire to see change. And so they heard from some public officials. We know Joe Biden was in Houston yesterday to meet with the family. He didn't want to come to the funeral today because he didn't want the security that would come with him to be a burden on the family. And so he delivered a video message. And we also heard from Congressman Al Green, who spoke about the mission and the inspiration that people need from to take from George Floyd's day. Take, take a listen his death. Take a listen to what Joe Biden and uh, Congressman Al Green had to say. It's when there is justice for George Floyd, we will truly be on our way to racial justice in America. And then, as you said, Gianna, your daddy will have changed the world. This country has not reconciled its differences with us. We survived slavery, but we didn't reconcile. We survived segregation, but we didn't reconcile. We're suffering invidious discrimination because we didn't reconcile. It's time for a Department of Reconciliation in the highest land, the highest office. Now, it's interesting, of course, there is this anger, this frustration, and this desire for change. People want to see that this death isn't simply swept under the rug like so many they've seen in the community in the past. And Reverend Al Sharpton, of course, a well-known civil rights leader, he delivered the eulogy today, and he acknowledged some people who were in the crowd, other families who've been high-profile victims of gun violence or police brutality, uh, the family of Michael Brown, the family of Eric Garner, uh, the mother of Trayvon Martin, all in the crowd. And he wanted, he wanted the people in attendance today to make a promise to the Floyd family that they simply wouldn't let this go, that they would hold the leaders to account. As he said, there was a lot of politicians grinning, smiling hands, or smiling and shaking hands. He said he didn't want those people to be, you know, just moving on down the road and forgetting about what they're promising now. So here's a listen to what Al Sharpton had to say. We must commit to this family, all of these family, all five of his children, grandchildren and all, that until these people paid for what they did, that we're going to be there with them because lives like George will not matter until somebody pays the cost for taking their lives. And Stephen, some of George Floyd's family members spoke. Tell us a little bit more about what they said. Yeah, you mentioned that off the top. You know, this was as much a call for justice as it was a chance to remember George Floyd, who he was. We heard from people who went to high school with him. He was a two-sport athlete. He had some difficulties in his life. He was in jail for, for some time, and he tried to turn his life around, became a father figure for those in the community, moved from Houston to Minneapolis to have a better life for himself. And we heard from his brother as well as his niece, who expressed not only the sorrow, but the anger that the family is feeling, a family that has had to grieve in public. Take a listen to what some of the family members had to say. I'm going to miss my brother a whole lot. And I love, I just want to say I, to him, I love you. And um, I thank God for giving me, giving me my own personal Superman. God bless you all. No more hate crimes, please. Someone said, make America great again. But when has America ever been great? But right now, 
I want justice for my brother, my big brother. That's Big Floyd. Everybody know who Big Floyd is now. Andrew, the Christian faith is so deeply rooted here in the community, especially with the family. And so many of the people who spoke today, many of the people we've been speaking with, see George Floyd's death as a message from God, as if God himself gave George Floyd a mission. And so when you see people here lining up, this is because they want to be a part of history. They understand that mission. They understand that this is something bigger than all of them. This is a point in history, uh, just like the civil rights movement in the 60s. They believe this can bring about lasting change. They don't want George Floyd's death to be in vain. And so people here are going to have a chance to say goodbye to George Floyd, to say his final goodbye as he's laid to rest beside his late mother. But they know that this is simply just the beginning. And I think you mentioned off the top, you know, there are black faces here, but there are also uh, white faces here, Asians, uh, people from, from all walks of life who've come, who've been touched by this death and who want to see a difference in America and not just in America, in the world. And so uh, it will be a, an emotional moment, uh, a powerful moment as the hearse comes by here uh, later, or rather the, the, the horse-drawn carriage comes by later with the casket, a chance for people to say goodbye, knowing that this is just the beginning of the road for many in their search for justice. And thank you. That is the CBC's Stephen D'Souza in Houston. We're all